So this is a kind of the characteristic of the US NCO. So the major part is the theoretical exam, right? No matter if the part one or part two is based on your understanding of chemistry, not related to your hands-on skills. And a minor part is the practical part, is the hands-on experiments part. And for the last school year, this is 0%. And for the coming year, as I expected, probably this is also 0%. So everything will be graded based on your performance in the written test. Yeah, it's a pretty standard test, which includes 10 topics. Uh, how many of you kind of, you know, are familiar with the uh, 10 topics? Yeah, I just saw the question. Uh, so let me, you know, answer the question, you know, later in the uh, QA session, okay? I saw a question from a, probably a student or a parent. So I will not, you know, uh, since I'm not sure, you know, how familiar you guys are with the 10 topics, uh, definitely we will have enough time to talk about this, you know, in my class, right? Uh, and then in the recent few years, it's getting harder. Uh, actually, I should say much harder uh, compared to the test before 2016. Uh, so how uh, and why? First, so the local exam and also the national exam includes more complicated calculations, which requires students to have a stronger you know, algebra foundation. And also the descriptive chemistry part a lot of students call it trivial. This is their nightmare. Uh, no one really likes it, right? This part is also getting more in-depth. And then some conceptional questions appeared in both kind of atomic structure, uh, in kinetics, uh, in equilibrium, in thermodynamics. So basically, you need to really have a very deep and good understanding about those concepts. And then you can successfully answer those questions. And the last part, the organic chemistry is getting more advanced. So previously, now say you only need to read a college level of organic chemistry textbook, only the first few chapters. But right now, you probably need to finish the first semester. Uh, especially in the national exam. And another thing, if you still remember, local is in March. For most of local sections, probably the results, you know, comes out by the end of March. And then the national exam is in late April. So there is a very short, you know, uh, interval between these two exams but the difficulty bump increment is huge so this is why a lot of students did a very good job in the local exam but you know they got relative bad results or at least unexpected results in the national exam that because first they didn't realize there is a much you know large difficult difference in the local and the national and also, after they get the results, oh, I, I qualify for a national exam, there is not too much time for them to really prepare. Okay, yeah, so uh, any questions so far? Uh, I got a few kind of questions, you know, from the private session. So uh, I think I can yeah, I think I can answer. Uh, I can answer this question first. So uh, it's a little bit earlier. So my class will prepare the students for both local and national. Why? Because there is not so much time for you to prepare the national after you know the results of local. It's less than one month. Less than one month. So this is why you know we typically prepare the student both for the local and at least for the national power one because they the style is pretty much the same they are both 60 multiple choices the only difference is the national power one is more advanced 
right? So if you kind of you know aim at a national power one, I believe you would you would do a very good job in the local. So you don't need to worry about this. So based on the characteristic of the US NCO, here I kind of listed a few challenges I realized, you know, in the past few years when I help students to prepare the US NCO. First, for most of students, the biggest challenge is no one to, to talk, no one to ask a question, no one to consult. So basically, their you know, chemistry teacher, even the AEP chemistry teacher, couldn't answer their questions in the competition level. Um, and also, I believe most of students who seriously prepare for the USNCO are juniors. And everyone understand how crazy it is the, in the junior year. There are so many things to, to do, right? Stand the test. Hopefully this year it will be slightly better. All right. Uh, I, I know a lot of colleges kind of, you know, remove the, the requirement, you know, make it optional or totally remove it for the standard test. But still, junior definitely will be very busy, right? And then a lot of trivia to memorize and, you know, students hate it. Right? But uh, what I want to share with you, actually, I do not call it trivia because descriptive chemistry is a very systematic part. It's just because the U.S. textbooks and the U.S. curriculum system does not include this part. It's not included in honors scan. It's not included in AP can as well. So this is why you need to get some specific guidance from an experienced you know, teacher or coach. And then organic chemistry, which we call it algal, is very hard to self-study. This is different from the AP level of contents because for a lot of students who are kind of aiming at the pre-med, the kind of, you know, their final goal is to be a doctor. So organic chemistry definitely is their headache for most of them. So even for students, college students who major in chemistry, I believe most of them will choose the algo to be the most challenging part. Yeah, so, it's not a surprise to see a lot of students have good local results, but probably unsatisfactory national results. And sometimes students think themselves have a very good preparation, but the results are not so, you know, as expected, right? Uh, I think the first one, this one, good local, you know, bad national, is mainly because first, the preparation time is not enough for the national because students are not sure whether I can, you know, uh, pass the local exam. So I cannot really start to the preparation for the national. So this is not my way. My way is always kind of prepare students in a higher level. So even they didn't perform so well in the local exam, so they still got a pretty good results in the local. And then they still have the chance to really fight for the national. And for the last one, good prep and bad results, typically the students work are not graded because they think, oh, I did it, I did it correct. But actually you need to show your work and the work might not be complete. And also there are a lot of details such as the units, right? The writing style, the significant figures and a lot of details need to be taken care. So if you do not have someone to grade your stuff, you don't know. You think, oh, I did pretty well, but actually you probably lost a lot of points. So every year, you know, when I ask my students to have a, it's not called prediction, kind of, you know, when they got the, the, the answer key of the national part two, so ask them to grade themselves. So typically their grading results is, much lower than my grading because I will be the most, you know, kind of serious grader, the test exam, you know, reader. And then if they can be trained in this way, definitely it would be benefit for them to take the exam and kind of, you know, avoid this kind of, you know, relative silly or small, you know, mistakes. 
Yeah, so this is pretty much, you know, uh, how uh, I can try to, you know, uh, help the student, help your kids. Uh, first, I will guide your study. Uh, not only the knowledge, not only the problem solving skills, uh, but more important is, you know, the time, the, the timeline. So, for example, this is very specific. For example, you are a sophomore, I will give you a kind of a slight different way compared to if you are a junior, right? And what is the right time to do the right thing? Uh, definitely, if you are a junior, it will be save you a lot of time. Uh, so I know a lot of students, they are kind of very independent students. So they did a lot of research, you know, in Google, in different platforms, different forums, right? And they finally, they are kind of an expert in competition. But I really do not think this is something they should do. They should focus on, you know, preparing the competition and not, rather than, you know, taking the time to find what is the best textbook, what is, you know, some good problems to practice at this moment, what is, you know, the, the problems they need to do in the next stage. So this is something the teacher, the coach should finish. So, and next, chemistry competition definitely can be studied, you know, by the students themselves. But typically, if they read the books, their understanding is not so deep. You need to have someone to help you deepen your understanding. And as I mentioned, you know, the grading is very important. You finish the problem set, right? You, you did a mock test, you need to have someone to check your, your stuff, to grade your stuff, to let you know what are the details you need to pay attention. So I can also help you to analyze your strengths and I think many weakness, right? Uh, this is how you improve yourself. And uh, if, if students are from my website, so probably you already saw a lot of, you know, uh, I think very useful resources from my website, like uh, the YouTube videos. And you probably know I'm an expert in descriptive chemistry and organic chemistry. So I definitely can help you the most uh, in preparing, you know, the most challenging part in the, in the exam.